Cardiovascular physiology is the study of cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system consists of heart, blood vessels, and blood. The first objective of this experiment is to study the structure and function of the cardiovascular system, that is to study the structure and function of the heart, blood vessels, and blood while the second objective is to measure the heart rate at rest. Heart rate is the number of heartbeats per minute. The next objective is to investigate the effect of exercise towards heart rate. So we want to know whether the heart rate increases or decreases during exercise. The fourth objective is to observe different types of blood cells in prepared slide. There are two different types of blood cells, the white blood cells and red blood cells. And the last objective is to identify the types of leukocytes in blood smear. Leukocytes are white blood cells which can be further divided into two, agranulocytes and granulocytes. Experiment 4 has two parts. First part is human heart model and prepared slides. Students must observe, draw, and label the structures of human heart model. There are two prepared slides. The first prepared slide is artery and vein, which was observed at 40x and 100x magnification. And the second prepared slide is smear of blood, which was observed at 100x and 400x magnification. Students must draw and label the structures of artery and vein as well as different types of blood cells. And the second part of this experiment is measurement of heart rate. Heart rate can be measured by counting the pulse. Pulse is the rhythmic bulging of the artery when blood is pushed through them. To measure the heart rate before exercise, students must relax and sit comfortably. Count the pulse at the wrist for 15 seconds, then multiply the amount by 4 to get the number of heartbeats per minute. After that, students must do about 2-5 to five minutes of physical activities before measuring the heart rate again. Record the heart rate and then compare the results before and after exercise. Assalamu alaikum. This is a human heart model. Heart is the organ that pumps blood to all parts in our body. It has four chambers and four valves. The function of valve is to prevent blood from flowing back into the heart chambers. Human heart is about the size of our fist. The blood vessels form the base of the heart that is at the top of the heart. The blunt pointed end is the apex of the heart that is at the bottom of the heart. A human heart has four chambers, two atria at the top and two ventricles at the bottom. Right atrium and right ventricle are separated from the left atrium and left ventricle by a wall known as septum. These are the atrioventricular valves that separate the atria from the ventricles. The right atrioventricular valve is known as the tricuspid valve that is located between the right atrium and right ventricle. The atrioventricular valve that is located on the left is known as the bicuspid valve or also known as mitral valve that is located between the left atrium and left ventricle. Tricuspid valve prevent backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium, while 
bicuspid valve prevent backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium. These are the semilunar valves that are located between the ventricles and the outflow vessels. This is pulmonary semilunar valve that prevents backflow of blood from the pulmonary artery to the right ventricle. And this is aortic semilunar valve that prevents backflow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle. Deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium via superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the lower limb, while superior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body such as from the brain and shoulders. When the right atrium contracts, blood is pumped from the right atrium pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, tricuspid valve is closed, deoxygenated blood enters the pulmonary artery pass through pulmonary semilunar valve. Deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery that branch off to right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. Left pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood to the left lung and right pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood to the right lung. Gas exchange occurs in the capillary beds in the lungs and oxygenated blood returns to the left atrium via pulmonary veins. When the left atrium contracts, oxygenated blood is pumped into the left ventricle passed through the bicuspid valve. When the left ventricle contracts, bicuspid valve is closed Oxygenated blood from the left ventricle enters aorta, pass through aortic semilunar valve. These are the arch of the aorta that carries oxygenated blood to the upper part of the body and lower limb. When the ventricles contract, blood is pumped from the apex of the heart upward. The heart wall has three tissue layers. The outermost layer is epicardium. The thickest layer is myocardium and the innermost layer is endocardium. Okay, next, let's look at prepared slide of artery and vein. So this is a slide of artery and vein of guinea pig. This is what you can see under the microscope, 40x magnification. You need to identify which one is artery and which one is vein. So you have to study the structure. Okay. And some more, for the these blood vessels, they have three tunics, tunica intima, tunica media, and also tunica adventitia. You have to label that too. Well, this is clearer, right? This is the slide, the same slide, under 100x magnification. Also, you need to draw and label the structures as what I have explained in previous slide. Now, let's look at prepared slide of human blood smear. This blood smear also referred to as peripheral smear. It is important task for evaluating blood related problems. Commonly used stains are Leishman stains and also right gemster stain. 
as you can see this use the right stain this right stain is a type of Romanowski stain which is commonly used in hematology laboratory for the routine staining of peripheral blood smears okay so let's look this light under microscope this is the blood smear under 100 X magnification blood is connective tissue you have learned this during bio 091 last semester so it consists of a fluid plasma in which red blood cells white blood cells and platelets are suspended in human the total circulating blood volume is approximately 5 liter to 5.5 liter about 55% of the blood volume is plasma, while the remaining 45% is made up of blood cells and platelets. Students, you need to observe different types of blood cells in this prepared slide. Identify, draw and label different blood cells. This blood smear is under 400x magnification. You can see the erythrocytes or red blood cells. It has biconcave this shape where it is thinner in the center than at the edges. Erythrocytes lack of nuclei and also mitochondria. Besides these red blood cells, you need to be able to identify, draw and label different types of leukocytes. Leukocytes or white blood cells can be divided into granular leukocytes which are neutrophil, eosinophil or basophil. While the agranular leukocyte can be monocyte or lymphocyte. Here you can see the Leukocytes. So you have to identify what is the type of these leukocytes. Students, how do you identify those leukocytes? You look at the nucleus, the shape of the nucleus. For neutrophils, they have segmented nucleus with two to five loops joined by a thin filament. Eosinophil have large granules. The nucleus is divided into two lobes. While for basophil, they have a pale nucleus that is usually hidden by granules. They are bilobed or trilobed nucleus present. While for lymphocytes, it have small rounded cells. And of course, the nucleus is present. And uh, Last but not least, monocytes, it is the largest uh, of the type of white blood cells and the nucleus shaped like kidney. While well, for platelets, you can see there are small purple dots there. So um, they are tiny spherical or this shaped bits of cytoplasm that lack nuclei. This is the next section of the experiment. You need to measure your heart rate. There should be three participants. Student A, student B and also student C. In this experiment, you need to use stopwatch. Okay, you can refer to your watch. You need to find the artery at your wrist. For your information, here you can find your pulse. This pulse, it can be felt using fingers. Usually, there are three types of arteries that can be felt. The radial artery, carotid artery and also brachial artery. So now, you are going to use this radial artery. In order to find the radial artery, 
you need to place the tips of the first two fingers of one hand on the palm side of the wrist as shown in this photo. Press quite firmly to feel the pulse of blood which each heartbeat sends through the artery. However, you are not supposed to use your thumb. You can write it in your report why you are not supposed to use your thumb. Count the pulse for 15 seconds and you need to record the pulse. Then multiply the amount by 4 to get beats per minute. Okay, the heart rate. Then repeat the same procedure twice. After that, you need to replicate the procedure for another two subjects. Okay, so you have done for uh, student A. Now you have to do for student B and also student C. So you just record the value of the heart rate and calculate the mean values. This is what I have explained just now. You also need to get the heart rate after exercise. So uh, the student A, B and also student C, they must engage in a physical activity for 2 to 5 minutes. You can choose, so let's say, if you want to run for 5 minutes, then all of the participants need to run for 5 minutes. Then immediately, you need to measure the heart rate. Once you have got the heart rate, you need to record the data. After that, compare the results of heart rate before and after exercise for all three students. Okay, student A, student B and also student C. So for results, you can present your data in the form of table and also bar chart. After results, you need to write down your discussion followed by conclusion and lastly references. That is all for experiment 4. Thank you students.